Happy Tuesday. We are reading the faith book. We're doing an audio book. Everybody's been after me to do this. Yesterday, we did the introduction. Today, we're going to do chapter one, which is faith defined. But before we do that, say this with me. The rest of my life is the best of my life. The best of my life is the rest of my life. Everything I touch turns to gold. I am smart, getting smarter every day. I am extremely talented. Great things are coming my way. Everything always works out for me. I am a wonderful person. Pastor Jim is a wonderful pastor. Pastor Jim is the ultimate pastor. If you need your prayers answered today, call me. We get incredible results. This is the only ministry in the country, the only phone number in the country where you can call and get healed, find a job, receive from God whatever it is you need. I will combine my faith with yours and we will get results for you. I've been doing this for decades, for 30 years, and it works. Incredible. Tell everybody you know who is sick and broke, call Pastor Jim. That should be the, the whole deal. Call Pastor Jim and the phone number. Give, give those cards to people. Make out cards that says, call. You may save somebody's life when you tell me. You can save their family from a life of poverty because I'll break the curse, speak the blessing, and pray over their finances and get them healed if they're sick. Amen. Make sure you call me today when you do your offerings and donations so I can speak God's word for word blessing over you. I want to get started right away. We're going to do this uh, faith defined. Share this video with everybody you know. Huh? Faith defined. What I'm doing is I'm reading the text of the book and I'm reading my notes as well. Faith defined. Faith is trust, confidence, assurance. Great faith believes every word in the Bible, that every word in the Bible is true exactly as it is written and expects it to cause results. Faith defined what faith is. Faith fact. Faith is the most powerful force in your life. Faith fact. Faith is available to everyone. Faith fact. Faith must always be based on God's word. Without faith, you can receive no promises of God or actually anything else from God. Faith is the most important subject in the Bible because faith gives us access to all the promises of God, <coughs> excuse me, including salvation and the blessing. <coughs> faith is simply believing that God is able and expecting that God will perform what he has promised in his word. Daniel 3, 17. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, If you throw us into the fire, our God is able and he will save us. That's faith. Hebrews 11.1 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of not, things not seen. In the King James Bible, there are ma major mistranslations in this verse. Please look these words up for yourself in the Greek concordance. The word substance in this verse should have been translated assurance or confidence. The word hoped should have been translated expect or expectation. The word evidence means proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, faith is the confident assurance of things expected, the certainty or proof beyond any doubt of things not yet seen. Faith is expecting to receive something that you cannot yet see or expecting something to happen without any doubt in your heart whatsoever. Faith is to believe or to take God at his word, to put absolute trust in him for your every want or need. In the Old Testament, the word trust means faith. A person with faith in God is a person who quite simply just believes what God said, that his word is true without exception and without any doubt. Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. Faith does not try to figure out how or when something will happen. It just expects that it will happen. 
Faith is believing God's word. When you do, it will be accounted unto you for righteousness, just like it was for Abraham, which is right standing with God. Faith knows the outcome of any circumstance or situation. Faith is a spiritual force that can be used to affect change. Faith overrides nature and time. Faith trumps all evil. For true faith, what true faith is? 2 Timothy 5, 1. Paul says to Timothy, I remember the unfeigned, genuine or true faith that is in your heart, which dwelled first in the heart of your grandmother Lois and in the heart of your mother Eunice, and I am sure it is in your heart also. True faith is always in a person's heart. True faith is based only on the word of God and absolutely nothing else. This is the Abraham type of faith. True faith always gives results. A person with true faith is willing to bet their life on the word of God, just as the disciples did after they had seen the risen Christ. People who have true faith depend on God alone. They actually have faith that God provides all their needs, and according to Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8, those people are blessed and are like trees planted by the water and will not even notice if or when a famine or recession comes. True faith refuses to be denied once the will of God has been established. When I refused to accept defeat, I moved to the realm of great faith. True faith absolutely refuses to be defeated. True faith has removed doubt by refusing to consider any other circumstances. Ephesians 6, 16. True faith is the shield that is used to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. Fiery darts are sickness, disease, poverty, stress, Fear, anxiety, worry, and the enemy's attempt to discourage you. True faith is faith in God's word that is in your heart. Proverbs three twenty, Proverbs 4, 23. Protect your heart because the issues of life come out of it. The enemy is always trying to steal God's word out of your heart. Mark 4, 15 says, if that happens, your blessings will stop. David said in Psalm 119, 11, thy word have I hidden my heart. God's word should be hidden in your heart and protected. Sense faith. Faith of the senses. Sense faith is belief upon the five senses, as well as physical evidence, emotions, or feelings. Many, time, many times this type of faith is also based on the experiences of other people, both good and bad. It is sometimes called the Thomas type of faith. People who say, I, believe, I will believe it when I see it. In John 20, 25, Thomas said, When I see his hands and the, and the print of his nails, and put my finger into the holes of his nails, and thrust my hand into his sides, I will believe. He had to see before he believed. And Jesus said he was faithless. Then Jesus said, Blessed are those who have not yet seen, but have believed. Head faith. John Wesley referred to this as mental ascent. He said this is a substitute for faith that looks and sounds so much like true faith that few people can tell the difference. I call it head faith. Just to make it easier to understand because it actually is faith that is in a person's head, not in their heart. Some people call it mental faith. Head faith can be very dangerous, both to the person who has a head full of faith and people who, try, who they try to minister to. People with little or no discernment are oftentimes very impressed with these people because of their knowledge of the scriptures, the way they talk and the confidence they have in themselves. They act and talk like faith powerhouses. The rule of thumb in judging another person's faith is not by what they say or how they act, but by what is actually going on in their life. If they are sick and broke, you can tell their faith is only in their head. If you are rich, successful, healthy, and happy, that is an evidence of faith. They don't know what they don't have. People who have mental faith think they have plenty of faith. They will question the will of God and make excuses for why they have not yet received. They will try to reason things out, doubt if they are on the right track, hunt for a verse to stand on, and are quick to accept defeat. I have heard many of them say, God must be teaching me patience. Many of these people don't know that their faith is only in their head. They do not know that they do not have true faith, 
and can become very frustrated when trying to receive from God because they will not admit that their faith is not where it needs to be. They believe they have great faith and cannot understand why it is not working for them. 18 inches. I heard Neil Syverson and other people say, many people will miss heaven by 18 inches. The distance between the head and the heart. People also miss healing, financial increase, and the blessing by the same distance. James 1.22 says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only. A doer of the word is a person who, when something happens, right away starts relying on and speaking God's word. A hearer only is a person who, when something happens, forgets everything they have heard because their faith is only in their head and not in their heart. Baby Christians. Two types of baby Christians. James 3.2 says, Whoever does not defile themselves with their words is a mature person. That means a person who curses themselves with their words, who does not watch their words. That also means people who curse themselves are immature or what we call baby Christians. According to Hebrews 5.12 and 1 Corinthians 3.2, they need to be filled milk, not the meat of God's word. New babies. This is the first type of baby Christian. These are the people who have just been saved and are very excited about everything that's going on in church and their new life. They are easy to minister to and receive quickly from God because they do not question anything they hear and usually do not try to reason things out for themselves. They have a childlike faith. Old babies. The second type of baby Christian. These are the people who are quick to tell you how long they've been saved. They are easy to spot because they do not control the words they say about themselves. They try to impress people with their faith, but many times they're sick and broke themselves. Mary says they're like a Shetland pony who thinks they are a big horse. Knowing God's word is not enough. Years ago, when we were still living in Wisconsin, there was a man who knew the Bible backwards and forwards. He could quote chapter and verse on just about any subject. He was quick to jump in and try to minister to anyone who had a problem of any kind. The only problem was the fact that he was sick and very broke himself. I quickly realized that even though he had faith, his faith was all in his head. You can always tell how much faith a person has by how much they have received from God. When people want everyone to think they have great faith, we have a right to question that. And I absolutely do question people's faith. I judge a person's faith not based on what they say, how long they've been saved, or how much of the Bible they have memorized, but only on the results they are getting in their own life. Always remember, if a person is staying sick and broke, it's because they have no faith. A smart person will realize that they don't have enough faith. Don't let yourself be led down the wrong path or be ministered to by people who have no faith themselves. I know another man, quiet, friendly, and unassuming. He does not pass himself off as anything special. But in reality, he is a man of great faith. He seldom makes a mistake and gives away millions of dollars to support the work of the Lord. He is a wonderful blessing to the kingdom. I caused quite an uproar on Facebook a few years ago when a lady who had been suffering with cancer for years said, I live by faith. I made a comment and said, if you had faith, you would be healed by now. People went ballistic on me. How dare you question her faith, they said. Others said, I have known her for years, and she is a woman, great woman of faith. I may have been somewhat insensitive, but I also told her we could get her healed through the power of God. She was not interested in that. She said she was just going to go by the Bible. It's a shame she does not know what it says about healing. We're going to have to pick this up tomorrow at the same place. Are you enjoying this? Call me if you need your prayers answered today. Share this video with everybody you know. I am determined you are going to live a curse-free, blessed life. I'm going to increase your faith with this series on the Faith Book. You will be amazed at how everything will increase in your life. All the good stuff which you deserve because of what Jesus did.